This is Edith Neumeyer, and I am the author of the book, The Mystery of Adam. Well, I need to really continue to talk about this translation thing. Uh, I said it so many times that the original word in Genesis for man or for Adam was Ha'adam. Sometimes the Bible translates or the Bible translators sometimes translate that original word Ha'adam as man. Sometimes they translate it as Adam. And sometimes they translate it as man in humankind. However, when they translate it as man in humankind, we usually take it as still as a male being. And I keep saying that really the translator should have translated this word Ha'adam with mensch. And it would have been a lot less confusing. However, historically, there were people that actually knew that that first, that word was a human being. Like, for instance, I uh, read the German Bible quite a lot, and in the German Bible, the word Ha'adam was correctly translated as Mensch. In the Greek, the word was translated as um, anthro anthropos. So anthropos was the same equivalent to Mensch. So even if it would have been translated correctly as human being or Mensch, people still were brainwashed or conditioned to believe that this first human being was a man. Now, of course, that was the result of male dominance, which started very, very early. I said in uh, some of my videos that as soon as Adam and Eve sinned, Adam was taking over leadership. When God called Adam right after the fall, the male being answered right away. So the man answered right away. It does not mean that God called the man alone. He said, Adam. And remember, we have seen in Genesis 5, 2, that God called both of them from the beginning, Adam. So even if we would have translated it as human being, tradition still would have conditioned us to believe it was a, a man. Now, nothing in that first creation account points to the fact that God created a man. Nothing in the second creation account points to the fact that the first human being was a man. In the opposite, the second creation account shows clearly that all the ingredients of the male and the female were included in the first human being. And if all ingredients were there in that first human being, and that first human being could have not been a man. It had to be both. Or it had to be just a totally brand new or different, different uh, person. Now, I also mentioned a little bit about Philo. Philo was a, um, a Jewish historian, you can say, during Jesus' time, during, during Paul's time. And Paul, I'm almost certain that Paul had uh, studied Philo because some of the things that Paul wrote kind of are similar to what Philo believes. So I'm going to do some, I'm going to read a little bit about Philo and what he believed about this first Adam. He said that first Adam, which was made in the image of God, was an idea or a genus 
or a seal, perceptible only by the intellect, incorporeal, neither male nor female, imperishable by nature. So he himself right there is saying that this first human being did not get its uh, male-female distinct form or man woman distinct form until after the split. So at the beginning, he says, it was that first human being was different. He continues to say, um, and very beautifully after he, Moses, called the whole race man, he distinguished between the sexes saying that they were created male and female, although all the individuals of the race had not yet assumed their distinct form. Somewhere else, Philo also, you know, points really out that the uh, rib was only symbolic. So Philo knew exactly uh, a lot of information about this first human being, that the first one was neither male nor female, and it didn't get its distinct form until later. However, even during Philo's time and Jesus' time, scholars still believed that the man was created first. At least, not all of them, but some of them. Some of them. Okay? It was already so ingrained by the time Jesus's, uh, Jesus came around that that's what the scholars even believed. There's, there have always been groups, Jewish groups, that believe that that first human being was not a man. And so that hasn't changed. There are still some groups that don't believe it. But even if you translate that word ha'adam as human being, traditionally it was continued as the first human being was a man. And that created the problem we're having today. Nobody stood up and said, or at least the small groups, the Jewish groups, didn't, people didn't stand up and say, wait a minute, you got it all wrong. No, when the Roman Catholic Church took over, the Roman Catholic Church put away everything Jewish, okay? They didn't want to have nothing to do with the Jewish religion, with Judaism. And so all the traditional understanding of uh, what the first writer's intention was got lost. And even the, the uh, you know, the, the Roman Catholic Church continued this misbelief that the first human being was a man. Now, when you do studies, when you do your own study, and you really, really look at the original text you will see that. Matter of fact, you don't even have to be a scholar. I am not a Hebrew scholar. Uh, I'm not even a, you know, a, I, I didn't go to seminary. I have the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit has shown me what I have written in my book. And I have done research and I, you know, listened and read a Bible scholar, especially Hebrew Bible scholars and how they translated things and how they studied things. And that's I, how I came across that something was wrong, seriously wrong. And again, you know, even if you translate it correctly with the word human being, people still um, insist to believe that the first human being was a man. Now, really, I mean, the Bible was written by men, mainly men, and men uh, brought in their ideas into their writings. Uh, I have talked about that too, that inspiration does not mean that people were uh, kind of struck by the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit took over their brain and everything they babbled was just pure uh, the words of God. It's not how it is. They had to process what God was telling them with their own understanding, and they wrote it down. 
and many times, and they have shown that very clearly with Paul, many times they also didn't understand things correctly. Paul didn't understand everything correctly about the creation of the first human being, or at least the way we read it, because that's what we have in our mind is, oh, wait a minute, the man was created first. We interpreted false. And so it is extremely important that we do our own understanding. And I even, believing that I, I, I believe, or I know that the first human being was not, a, was not a man, I still fall into this mindset because I have been, um, I have been brainwashed or conditioned to believe that all my life. And it hasn't been very long since I, I'm realizing, wait a minute, that's not true. But because we believe it, we fall into this trap and we evaluate things according to the belief that the first human being was a man. It took me a while to really get the right mindset. We don't have the right mindset. Oh, we just go really, really um, overboard. Uh, I talked last time about after the fall, when God kicked out the mensch uh, out of the garden. Because that section starts with the mensch, the human being, and his wife. And I said, you know what? Well, if we believe that the first human being, the mensch, was a man, and his wife, then you're thinking, well... But she wasn't a mensch. She wasn't a human being. But we need to get this in our mindset that both were human beings. And why did the writer use the mensch, the human being, and his wife? Well, maybe because the writer was already affected by this mindset, by this male-dominated mindset that the first human being was a man. I think that happened very fast in history, that eventually people believe that the man, oh my goodness, the man was the first one. And then, you know, the woman was created out of that little teeny rib. Or maybe they even, I don't know when it came about. It's kind of hard to follow how the historical background kind of came about. But it's even more important to really look at the original text to find out what does this word mean. So that's what uh, my uh, video is going to be today. It's going to be a little shorter. Uh, again, I want to just really encourage you to do your own studies, to try. I, my Bible is a Greek a Hebrew Greek, well, it's actually a Greek study Bible. So it's not a full translation. Here's the Hebrew, here's the English. It has certain words um, you can look up and see what they mean in the original text. So um, you don't have to be a, a total Bible scholar or a Hebrew scholar to understand that something was not right. You just have to have the right mindset. And, and I think, again, I, I said that so many times, the Holy Spirit is so important. If you do not let the Holy Spirit show you the truth, you will never find it. So many people, they just totally resist this idea that the first human being was a, um, I don't know what, how I should call it, but it had both both gender in one. They just totally put that away and they just totally are stuck in tradition. Totally. Well, no, you know, we learned this and so therefore we're going to have to continue um, this belief. This is tradition and because it's tradition, um, we're going to have to believe it. See, so many people don't understand that how we translate the Bible has a lot to do with trend, uh, tradition, a lot, so much. We don't even understand how much 
as our understanding comes from tradition, just like the first, the, the writers of the, the original text of the Bible, they were all affected by their traditions. And we have to know what kind of traditions that they believed in, okay? Because that is what we believe. So anyways, yeah, this is it for today. And I will do another one soon and um, see what else I can talk about. I just hope that, again, if you have any comments, to leave them on the bottom. And I can talk about those things some other time. That may be questions that you have. All right. I will see you soon. And keep studying.